okay youtube welcome back to another g auto repair video and today we will not be talking about this car we will be talking about what's what the car is on which is this denmar m6 max jacks portable lift and uh i've had it for about two years now and since i installed it where you see it that's where it has stayed i have never moved it anywhere else not even momentarily so it's been there for almost two years and uh, i keep it in my little work area which as you can see is just a, a portable uh carport uh a, a larger than normal one actually and uh it has maintained very well uh, even though it's somewhat out in the elements which is not really designed to be out in the elements but you know we do whatever we want to right so anyway anyways i encourage you to watch the entire video as i will be going over some uh issues that i've had uh, some not major others are just annoying and uh maybe you're having some of these issues if you have one of these or if you're thinking about buying one you will be aware of what to expect so anyways moving forward um, as I said before, this is the Danmar M6 version. There is a newer version out there made by Benpak because Danmar went out of business. And with that being the case, some issues have arisen. More on that here shortly. And um, to go into the very first issue I had when I first purchased and installed this unit is um, not on this side, but on the other side for some reason after you raise the car you set it on the safety locks you finish doing whatever you were doing you were you were release the locks and then lower the the car the locks will automatically reset themselves i don't know why it would do that but i figured it out obviously but it was just random so what i did is i called uh denmar at the time and uh, they sent me new springs. These two springs you see here, they send them brand new. Um, they were updated springs. They were heavier duty. Um, and that fixed the problem. I guess the original springs were too weak. So as the locks are, are being popped in and out as the, as the car or the lift is going down, it would be enough to kind of, I guess, reactivate the lock. I don't know. But ever since they sent that, problem gone fixed uh forget about it so the other issue i've had is these uh rubber pads here um they didn't the first set didn't last too long uh, not even a year and they literally split in half not all of them just mostly the ones in the front because that's where they take the most beating um so i had to purchase new ones online not a major issue it's just kind of annoying that you know something so expensive wouldn't last that long but that's a wear and tear item uh, i will show you something that i did to improve that but now that i'm talking about those pads that's where i found out this major issue here with uh denmark is that denmark went out of business so i called them thinking well maybe since it hasn't been that long maybe they'll send me some some free uh pads you know and uh, I called them up and uh, what I was told is that all these older units sold by Denmark are no longer under warranty so that was a major bummer because I spent a lot of money on this unit supposed to have supposed to have a three-year warranty and now you're telling me that no literally almost brand new out of the box it has no warranty not even a year old at the time it had no warranty so to me that that's unacceptable but that's what i was told at the time i don't know if they've changed that since i hope they did because in my opinion somebody needs to still honor this warranty so but that's what i was told on the phone I said no the older units sold by Denmark are not covered under warranty. Warranty has been nulled and void. Bunch of malarkey, but that's what I was told. But anyways, I digress. 
Now what I did on this side, and I just did one as a prototype and I had never finished the project, but I, I had a friend of mine help me fabricate these uh, metal rings. Um, it's pretty much like a big washer. And uh, it actually has helped to maintain this rubber pad very well. Um, these were all purchased at the same time. I got the car kind of preset here so I can't pull it out, but um, I purchased them. All these were the, the last uh, pads that I purchased, and this one in particular has held up way better than any other pad that does not have that. So in my opinion, that should have, I guess, been fabricated into the to the puck, as they call it, is the, but it was not. So what I did is just fabricated a ring that fits into this little groove here. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's kind of dark there, but. Um, and, it, and it fit right in there and it has helped to maintain that. Obviously, sometimes I do have to take it off because I, it's just barely enough clearance and whatnot, but it has helped to maintain it a lot better. So you may want to do something similar to that. Another thing I did was I, this is the original hose that came with the unit, but on this side, I actually had a longer one fabricated and it goes all around my work area here so it won't be in the way. And then it comes back over here and it's been like that since probably over a year now. So I haven't had any issues. It just kind of keeps the hose out of my way because otherwise your unit will pretty much be right here in the middle and that sucks because it's in the way so i just did that and resolved that issue but you still kind of have hoses laying in the in the floor so if you want to roll something this way you got to fight with it but yeah, that comes with the territory it being a portable lift um the hoses are laid all over the place i'm sure we can come up with another way to just you know route it over here or something like that but these hoses become very expensive so i did not go that that route so this lift has a rated capacity of six thousand pounds that's one of my little things that i i don't like because me dealing with hydraulics in my previous employment i know for a fact that these hydraulics can do a lot of work lift a lot of weight um, I'm sure, uh, obviously certain components need to be beefed up a little bit um, to handle that load but I know for a fact that these uh, lifts could be ma made to carry more weight than what they're rated as it is right now I know it'll lift more than 6,000 pounds I've proven it but do not do this at home because if something happens I'm not going to be held responsible for, for whatever you do but um i have pushed the limits a little bit not too much but a little bit and i know it'll lift it it's just it's rated for six thousand so um the the fact that it can lift more than that i know that it can be built better to lift more capacity without compromising too much of the portability aspect of it in my opinion i'm not an engineer or anything like that but just based on what i've seen and what i've done i think that it can be done and that's where i have an issue with the whole pricing and what this unit can do again i'm satisfied with the unit i'm happy with it better than working on the floor better than dealing with jacks uh which sometimes I still jack the car up anyways with jacks and jack stand, depending on the car. But this unit was retailing for about $2,200, $2,300 when I bought it. Now there's a new version, the Ben Pack version, which is an M6K. You'll see a K next to that 6. And it is retailing now for $2,875, which is ridiculously expensive in my opinion because for pretty much $2,900 you can get a lift that lifts nine, ten thousand 10,000 pounds and raises it up to six feet. 
so you can literally walk under the car a full-blown regular lift obviously it's not portable but it can do way more than what this can do for the price and you probably won't even spend three thousand dollars um you can go to greg smith and and get a nine thousand pound lift for under two two k under two thousand dollars so i think that the pricing on this just because it says portable i think is a little ridiculous i, I think they can do better than that again this is my opinion um what do i know but um that's a major issue that i have what it can do and the price that i'm paying for this unit so this is the actual power unit here um this is the 220 version i opted for a, a 220 volt unit instead of a 110 so i had the power out here with an extension that i made you know just go to lowe's or home depot get a cable get these ends and voila you know you just plug into the wall and that's it yeah. but uh i got the 220 version um how long does it take to lift the car well let's find out i mean why not we got plenty of time to sit around and watch this video uh, another issue I don't know if it's gonna do it now we'll know here in a second because um, I don't know if you can appreciate it in the video but it really doesn't lift evenly that's another issue I've had and I know I'm not the only one see there's a first click and there's a second one see how they're really off this one's gonna engage first and then that one see so if I well, let, let me just keep on going for now. So you have to kind of watch it. And uh, once this one tops off, then the other one will catch up to it. I guess you can tell right there that there's a, uh, that side is lower. That's, that's a pretty bad uh, pet peeve actually you can really tell so let me lower that down Ugh, that didn't work out that didn't work out too well okay and now that one has to catch up that was way more than what it should have been see it was a whole a whole safety click behind so you got to be careful with that and i don't like that that is what this is for this flow divider right here um in my opinion even i don't know if it has something to do with the longer hose on one side but i'm pretty sure it was doing it before i did that modification um, and I know several people who have complained in other forums and videos and stuff I think that I've seen before I purchased it that were complaining about the same thing and uh, I just think that this doesn't work too well in my opinion again I'm not an engineer or anything like that but um, I haven't even called them back because as I said there's no warranty I'm not paying for this because God knows how much that costs. And in my opinion, it should be covered on the warranty, but it's not. But even if they send me a new one, I don't. I think I'm going to have the same issue. Because I read somewhere that somebody was having the issue. They sent them a new flow divider, and I think it was doing the same thing. Um, I guess it's just the fact that they really don't have no equalizing cables or anything. Uh, I think it's just part of the... It comes with the territory. Um, what I've done is, you know, you kind of play with it a little bit. Make sure it doesn't get too off the instruction manual if i remember correctly said that um up to three and a half inches is acceptable difference from one side to the other is acceptable uh, but as you saw that was more than three and a half inches so and that happens every now and then um so you got to be kind of careful about that i don't know if one side is binding more than the other uh honestly i don't know but I think there is some binding sometime going on because as I'm raising it, the car, the, the lifts kind of start do, 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 vibrating on the way up a little bit. 
Um, sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. Um, I will say that in the M6K version, there was there were 10, 10 uh, improvements made. Um, and I encourage you to go to the maxjack.com, I think, website. Um, and, and, and research it. But there was 10, 10 updates that they were done to the unit. And one of them was a different paint finish to minimize that kind of binding. So I'm thinking that they figured out that this was an issue. And they probably did something. The paint where those uh, maintenance-free blocks ride on. They, 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 they changed the whole painting. of The unit is gray. And uh, it helps, I guess, to um, operate a little bit more smoother. That's what I'm assuming. But in all, they did 10, 10 revisions, and that was one of them. Uh, the other one, I think it, um, I think they, uh, in, the, in the specs, I think it, it, it lifts a little higher, a little bit higher. I'm not, I think I saw that, a little bit higher, and I think it was just 50 inches, not, nothing major. This one lifts a max of 48, I think, or something like that but um same weight rating same everything it's just they've made some improvements to it but i believe that this can go through more improvements to increase the one increase the capacity and lift it higher maybe a little bit more um maybe not so much the height because you know i don't know i'm not an engineer but definitely more weight capacity so this comes standard with these i think i purchased the uh the five and a half or six inch extensions separately and uh, so you can on taller cars you can actually um use those adapters and and you and take more advantage of the height um so i'm about six foot tall i'm that little squeaky noise is this little chair that I'm riding in. So I'm sorry about that. But I can sit on my little creeper chair doohickey and just roll around and do whatever work I have to do. And it's better than being on the floor. So I'm happy about that. Um, like I said, it's not a bad... It's not a bad piece of equipment. It's just... I feel that... For the money, you should be able to do more with it. Uh, capacity wise um, like I said without really sacrificing too much of the portability portability aspect of it uh, another issue that I've had and again this is a simple fix this is nothing that the manufacturers are responsible for I think it's just the way that I set up the lift is sometimes especially when the vehicles are wider like SUVs and things of that nature um, I forgot what distance I have it set here. I think it's a hundred and something inches uh, from post to post or from the back of the post to the back of the post. Or I forgot how it was that, that they tell you to set it up, but they give you several options. And uh, so when I got bigger cars, it's a pain to drive through the two poles and then to be able to open the door to squeeze out. Because most of the time you literally have to squeeze out without bumping the doors on these on these things here um and they do bump believe me they you got to be careful because you will jab this into a door and that's not going to be a good day um the arm reach i uh, i like i said i've been actually tinkering with the idea of moving it over just to give me some more clearance, maybe just a few inches. Maybe if I put this back over here, I'm sorry, this to put it here, and then drill another three holes back here, that might be sufficient enough to help me with that problem. And probably do the same thing over here. Do the same thing over here, just move it a hole and that'll give me at least six, seven, eight more inches of clearance on either side um, combined actually but most of the time how I compensate for that is I get really close to this post 
and then I have plenty of room as you can see here the difference and then I have room where I can swing open the door and get out and once the car is up forget about trying to open the door and creeping in like we would in in normal actual lifts see you're not you're not squeezing through that if this arm was just making contact even if the wheels were on the ground forget about it you're not getting in this car so that's another issue but again i think that i can correct just by moving the lift post outward more um i'm just kind of worried about it being able to reach to the points where it needs to reach i guess maybe that's why i haven't really done it um but there's only one way to find out and that's to do it so eventually i will have to buy some more uh, anchors like these now uh, these boogers here have gotten expensive um i think they used to be 95 dollars for a set of 10 from max jacks I think now they've jacked it up to like $115. So I don't know what that's about, but everything seems to be going up. So it is what it is. Um, but I'm weary about uh, going through other sources. I mean, this is safety we're talking about. So uh, what price do you want to put on safety? I'd rather spend the 115 bucks and know that it's rated for that and i'm gonna be okay versus trying to go to lose or some somewhere and finding something it may work maybe better cheaper but i don't know it's just peace of mind it's just peace of mind for me um if you have an idea share share also if you have a unit and you've done other little things share what you've done uh, maybe share a video i don't know and uh, we can all get ideas um this is when I pour I poured I had to cut two two by two squares where I was gonna put them and re-pour because when this concrete was made it wasn't made too well. It was too thin. And that's a whole different can of worms. I'm not even gonna get into that. But um that's just something that you may have to do depending on how thick your slab is. The minimum thickness per instructions is four inches minimum um, when I drilled if I had three it was too much so that's why I had to cut dig and repour so that bad boy is sitting about a foot deep of concrete it ain't going nowhere you can uh, you can build the Eiffel Tower on this thing and it ain't going nowhere. But the lift may not be able to handle that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and lower this so you guys can see. Now you got to raise it up to get it off the safety uh, locks. We release each safety individually. I know it's got a cluttered in here i gotta open up some more space i actually have plans on expanding the shop a little bit so if you haven't done so uh subscribe to the channel and uh stay tuned for some updates on, uh, on my work area and now uh, we're just gonna lower the car once it lowers it it lowers nice and even never had an issue well I did have one weird issue one time I don't know what that was about I don't know if I did something but it wouldn't come down yeah the, the lift would not lower the car it would get hung up here somewhere and it wouldn't come down so every now and then I just lubricate those things and And uh, supposed to be maintenance free, but I lubricate them anyways. And then you just kick these things out, and you're done. Okay. 
So see this is what I was talking about earlier. See how this get th this doesn't have much life in it. In any minute this will split and uh, it'll be all she wrote. Then I'm gonna think about maybe just leaving it like that or buying a new set of uh, pads. Thinking I'm probably just gonna leave it like that without the pad, but again, I'm not sure. So as you can see, this one has this metal ring that I made for it. It fits right in there. And uh, you can see the difference. These are all the same age. And you can see this one is held out a lot better. The two in the front always get the, the worst beating because all the weight is there. So I guess we can do this like uh, tire rotations and rotate them out every so often to get the maximum uh, uh, longevity out of them but that's it this is uh, the unit uh, the Denmar M6 Max Jacks again there is a newer version the M6K I haven't used it I haven't really seen it in action but I know they've made uh, about 10 modifications to it or updates and uh, and now they charge 2800 bucks for it so take that for what it's worth i think it's a good investment is just again going back to the whole price and what it can do i just think i think they can do a lot better for what you're paying for but ben pack call me and change my mind <laughs> i dare you please Please do. Well, guys, I appreciate you uh, staying tuned and watching the entire video. I hope some of the things I went through uh, help you out. Um, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and uh, share your experiences if you have one. Um, share your videos if you have one. And uh, let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching. Catch you on the next video. Ciao.